that's kind of cool. Uh, one person in the park this morning, a jogger, and uh, she knew the happy camper. <laughs> cool. Uh, anyway, yes, it's ephem ephemeral time. <laughs> I can never say that word proper. Ephemeral. This is the time of a uh, year. Uh, it's spring, early spring. The broad leaf, uh, leaves, the deciduous, deciduous leaves, uh, like the maple, the, the ash, the elm, they haven't come up yet, so the wildflowers are taking advantage of the sunlight. Once that stops, once the leaves come out onto the, the, uh, the trees, then they stop growing, right? So uh, I'm going to have a look at those before all that stops. Um, this is an early spring, so there's only a few out right now. A lot of them aren't flowering, so I'll do, a, do this in progression. Yeah, so uh, today I'm going to look at one of the main ones that come out, leek, wild leek. I can smell them from here. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have a look at those and also uh, white trout lily, no, not white trout lily, it's yellow trout lily here and uh, they're not flowering yet, um, but we'll have a look at the leaves anyway and also bloodroot, so those three that are the main ones that come out right away and, and especially the bloodroot should be flowering right now, they're one of the first so there, we're now exploring the ephemeral time of the year in the wilderness uh, and if you hear truck noises, um, I'm right beside a main highway. I'm just down the road from where I live, and this is a great woodlot. It's tons of wildflowers in here, very diverse. Not going to tell you where I am. <laughs> That's because there are leeks here, by the way. I don't want everybody to harvest all the leeks. I'm okay harvesting leeks. Uh, right here, no, I wouldn't. Um, but uh, yeah, I just don't want to tell a whole bunch of people where, where leeks are. If you can find them, it's like a trit scene. If you can find them, it's like Crown Land. If you can find it, <laughs> then that's fantastic. You've done all the work. But yeah, just don't make it easy for people to find them. It's like morel mushrooms too. Same idea. All right, I'm going on on tangent. Beautiful time though. No bugs yet. Birds are singing. And uh, ephemeral time. <laughs> Say that three times fast. And we're gonna look at some early spring wildflowers. Yeah, so key characteristic of the leek is uh, lancite leaves, purplish um, skin right down to the bulb, and the bulb turns white. I've actually seen leek though with all white, but generally it's um, it's a pinkish color. And uh, if you don't want to just take the one bulb out and put it back in again. like that okay and yeah so um, that is a wild leak so another spring wildflower uh, is the uh, yellow trout lily and uh, very very common in fact it's scattered all the way through here some leek with it as well they like each other like the same soil they like moist soil by the way um, not wet but moist and yeah let's have a look at this okay here they are it's one single leaf there and why they're called trout lily is that it looks like a brook trout um, now some people say it looks like the side skin of a brook trout I think it looks like the verbiculum the, the top of the brook trout uh, the camouflage it has on its back for avial, uh, aerial predators. But yeah, it's got blotches, okay? So really prominent, and on the underside it does not. Lancelate ovate leaf. If you dig down here, you'll get the, to the white bulb. And um, these are edible. Oh, just had someone go. <laughs> I'm saying there, nobody's here, and there's someone's here. So they are edible. Uh, I don't like them. <laughs> the older they get, they're really bitter. I mean, right now they'd be okay uh, because they just unfurled and they're quite small. Um, if you eat too much of this though, it'll make you throw up. Uh, and, uh, you'll get, well, a bad gut. Um, these aren't bad, the bulbs. I won't pull, pull them out here. I don't want to um, kill them off here. But basically if I pull it out, there's a white bulb. It almost looks like a pearl. So you can, yeah, you can maybe snack on these and the bulbs along the trail if you want but you're not really getting much out of it, so just let them grow. Oh, by the way, if you can hear the traffic, I am just right off the main road. <laughs> uh, this is an incredible place for wildflowers. Uh, nobody really goes here. And again, we're in the sort of the pandemic time and the trails are really busy, but I, I go here in the morning and there's no one here. I don't know why. 
don't tell anybody. <laughs> Yellow trout lily. Flowers aren't out yet. I should come back later to shoot those. Um, probably another week. Um, oh yeah, uh, and it takes five to seven years for them to mature to get a flower. And so all these guys are young, I can tell, because they're single leaf. They need two leaves to actually have a flower. So I'm not, I'm not even going to find flowers here anyway. These are all young ones around here. I always love this uh, trout lily idea because um, I go trout fishing. Well, the season won't open until another week now here, but uh, but yeah, trout lilies come out when I'm trout fishing. So I kind of like this plant for that reason because I love trout fishing. I got to say, Angel is a lot better off the leash than on the leash. Um, I live for a place where she doesn't have to be leashed all the time and going through this stuff. I do have her on the leash though because we're in a park and there are people starting to come around now. So yeah, I'm just being ethical and respectable and it's not easy going through a wood like this with a leash dog that I'm just not used to it but yeah this is what I'm talking about you can see all the greenery coming out look above me no leaves yet kingfisher pilot woodpecker wood duck you probably can't hear all that Probably here just hear the trucks on the highway. Uh, but yeah, all the greenery coming out on the forest floor and no greenery up top. Watch it, dog. You stay. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Okay, I got a bloodroot here. I'm out of the park now. I'm actually just uh, up the road from my house. Uh, it's my neighbor's property, just on the, his laneway. <laughs> so um, yeah, bloodroot. So let's have a closer look at this one. I love this plant. Okay, so bloodroot, very lobe shaped leaf. And actually early morning, well it's mid morning now. Um, what it does is it wraps around the stem this time of year to keep it warm. You can see it's already Losing some of its uh, flowers, so I'm gonna, glad I got this one. I, I did, and just to show you why it's called bloodroot, I'm gonna dig up one. Yep. There we go. Look at that. That is why it's called bloodroot. Okay, it's very toxic, very poisonous. There is um, stories that First Nations people used to use this liquid for bug repellent. I don't know much about that though. Uh, I wouldn't because it's it's very toxic. It'll actually burn the skin. Okay, so <laughs> don't be doing that. Come back. Bloodroot. One of my favorite plants. There's a whole bunch of bloodroot over there. This is my neighbor's ditch. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for coming out. Uh, I'll be doing more of these throughout the spring, and then I'll do some other things throughout the summer as well. Uh, right now, again, it's the stay-at-home order here in Ontario, so this is keeping me busy, just going up the road from my house and doing a wildflower ID. All right. I smell wild leeks. Yeah, there's wild leeks around here too. <laughs> I can smell them. Cool. Yeah, I smell leeks. Wow. I'm going to ask my neighbor if I can harvest some of his leeks. Yum. I got a big pimple at the end of my nose. Welcome to wearing a bloody COVID mask all the time. <laughs> oh. Right, Angel? You're right. She hates being on a leash, but gotta be safe, doggy.